All right. Well, I thought today I'd kind of follow Michael again, and we'll see if we can't see if I can't get the shofar to blow correctly. So here we go. <laughs> you a little story about um, about the blowing the shofar anyways uh, it's called Glad the King once just before the new year the Baal al Shim came to a certain town and asked the people who read the prayers there in the days of all they replied that this was done by the Rav of the town and what is the manner of praying he asked the Baal al Shim on the day of atonement they said he recites all the confessions of sin in the most cheerful tones. The Baal al Shem sent for the Rav and asked him the cause of the strange procedure. The Rav answered, The least among the servants of the king, he whose task it is to sweep the forecourt free of dirt, sings a merry song as he works, for he does what he is doing to gladden the king. Said the Baal al Shem, May my lot be with yours. And this is to remind us that sounding the shofar need not be a dirge. If we are sincere in our thoughts, then the shofar blast should be joyous because we are serving the king. So, uh, I thought that was a nice little story to go along with uh, our um, days of awe. So, uh, Nicholas was the one who uh, asked for... Um, a song before prayers, and I learned one. We'll see if I can remember it. Ya ba 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 bum 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 bum. Ya ba 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 bum 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 bum. Ya ba 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 bum 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 bum. Ya ba 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 bum 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 bum. Yum ba ba bum 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 bum. Yum ba ba bum 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 bum. Yum ba ba bum 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 bum. Ya ba 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 bum 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 bum. Ya ba bum ba ba bum bum, yum bum bum ba ba bum bum, yum bum bum ba ba bum bum, ya ba 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 bum 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 bum, ya da 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 da, ya da 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 da, ya da 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 da, aha aha, ya ba 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 bum. That was my attempt. Hopefully, it wasn't too horrible. So I thought we'd uh, start. Uh, with prayers, we need to uh, face east towards Jerusalem, and we're going to be using the Indy Yeshiva. Mine doesn't have a cover. I loaned mine out, uh, but this is a printed copy. So I put the link up where you can find it on 3xdaily.org, and we'll start. <clears throat> a psalm before the verses of praise. A song for the dedication of your people. I praise you, El Shaddai, for lifting me up above my enemies. Adonai Raphai, I called to you and you healed me. You kept my soul from destruction and preserved me from darkness. Sing to Melech HaMelechim and praise the name. Your anger is brief, but your love lasts forever. The night may bring weeping, but the dawn will bring peace. When everything was good in my life, I felt strong because you made me strong. But when I couldn't feel you, I was terrified. I pleaded with the Lord, What good would my death be? How can I honor and praise you if I am dead? Be compassionate to me and help me. You turn my sadness into dancing. You have taken away my darkness and dressed me in light, so that my soul will praise you eternally. Adonai, I will praise you forever. Kaddish. May your name be great and holy in the world which you have made in your way. May the presence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu be over you in your life and in the lifetime of your people. Amen. May Adonai be blessed forever. The greatness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu is beyond all words. Blessed is Adonai. Amen. For those who choose to be chosen, for students and teachers of Torah, here or anywhere, may you have all blessings. Amen. May all of us have peace and life. Amen. The Amidah. I am grateful to you, protector of all our God and God of our ancestors, Elohei Avram, Elohei Sarah, 
Elohe Yitzhak, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Leah, Elohe Horako. Adon Olam, who created goodness, who inspires us to repair the world in compassion, King, Queen, Saver, and Shield, blessed are you, shield of our patriarch, shield of our matriarch, and of us all. Adon Olam, give us knowledge. After giving us a knowledge, accept our repentance. After accepting our repentance, forgive us our shortcomings. After forgiving us our shortcomings, redeem us. After redeeming us, heal us. After healing us, bless our lives. After blessing our lives, bring us together. After bringing us together, judge us fairly. After judging us fairly, defeat the evil in us. After defeating our evil, strengthen our inclination to do good. Now that we are holy before you, make the earth heavenly for us. Hear our prayers and make us worthy of your goodness. Baruch Ata Adonai Ha El Ha Kadosh. Blessed are you, Lord our God, the Holy God. Baruch Ata Adonai Ose Ha Shalom. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who makes peace. Baruch Ata Adonai Sumea Tifila. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who hears our prayers. Amen. So, now that we've done that, do we have, does anybody have anything interesting they wanted to talk about today? Um, I haven't read anything interesting in the news. We, we did have that article that we were featured in the other day, Patrick alerted me to. Oh, and Patrick wanted me to make sure to tell you that um, uh, Hava and Rob will be doing Monday services. So we will be back to the three times a week schedule, and that will be great. Be kind of back in the swing of things. Any, anybody? Oh, uh, so latecomer. My name's Rivka, and uh, I'm going to be doing Wednesday services. So hi, how are you doing? I didn't find anything really interesting this week to talk about. Uh, there's plenty to talk about with the day's law. Uh, Patrick says if anybody wants to do Tuesdays, Thursdays, they're welcome to. I'm sure you can let Patrick know at Patrick at punctor.org. So I don't know, um, think something interesting to speak about. Oh, good. Pamela says she'll start. Huh. Um, hmm. So we're in the middle of the day's law. We're almost, almost to Rosh Hashanah. It's coming. Starting the new year. I always enjoy that. How can you not love apples and honey? I find it really interesting that I'm um, trying to uh, take to heart the days of all, especially this year, and do my best to repair any of the wrongdoings I've done this year. I worked on that yesterday and the day before and sort of getting things in order. And um, I've been reading some interesting stuff about the shofar. Um, I've been working on that. Um, and uh, it a lot of uh, different scholars have been speaking about how it's a great way to sort of clear your mind and get things started for um, uh, praying and getting yourself in that mindset so that you can uh, really uh, change how you've been acting, uh, things that you might have regretted how you handled them and figure out how you can do better in the future. So it's really one of my favorite um, times. Um, Patrick asked me how how am I working on things, and Pamela says, how do these wrongs manifest in me? Prayer, meditation, conscious thought. Uh, well, the first thing that the wrongs I I think about the year and I reflect kind of what this period is for, reflect back and say, 
maybe I didn't handle this situation so well. Uh, I used to live with someone, I was their living nanny, and I had some stuff at their house, and we kind of parted on bad terms. So I went over the other day and had a talk and, you know, made it clear that if they were ever really in trouble, they could call on me and I would do my best to help them. And uh, in that way, try to repair my actions and set myself up and set up our relationship so that in the future I can do good deeds and I can act responsibly and kindly uh, in order to not have to worry about how I've acted next year. Um, Pamela asks uh, about prayer and meditation. Prayer, I spend time during prayers reflecting on you know, what's happened during the day, what's happened a few hours before. Um, I'm not very good at meditation. I haven't quite figured that one out. I'm a little ADD. I, uh, <laughs> I wander around and just can't, can't sit still. And I haven't quite figured out, uh, how to, uh, Kabbalah's way of meditating. It's, it's a little bit mysterious to me. I haven't quite achieved that level of, uh, enlightenment, shall we say. So... Pamela asks, can you walk and ponder? Um, no, I'm not very good at walking and pondering either. Like I said, ADD, it's like one topic to another, over and over again. I'll just end up walking back and forth and pacing and walking up and down the block instead of actually walking around. It's really quite, uh, annoying. <laughs> But I've really found over the last uh, week, week and a half of blowing the shofar that it it really is a good way to break up things, to um, get into that mindset, to give all of my brain power and my, uh, shall we say, uh, soul, my essence into the words I'm saying and the sentiments I'm trying to uh, give forth to Hashem and um, use the words to repair how I feel and my um, thoughts today. So, that's really interesting. Pamela says her thoughts race for a different reason, so she empathizes with me. <laughs> it's understanding. It happens a lot. You know what we're talking about. Shemesh. Talking candidly with God. I always try to do that. Um, the spontaneous outpouring of emotions and thoughts to Hashem, I think, is always a blessing. Um, it gets things off your mind and helps move your day along and make sure that you have a connection, that you're always thinking back. The, the wonderful thing about Judaism is there's always, there's always this, there's always a ritual or an idea or a physical um, manifestation that helps us um, return, you know, remember the covenant, to remember that Hashem is there, and to remember that we have been given free will and we need to pay attention to what we do with it. So, Patrick says, uh, he usually thinks in the car, usually in traffic. Yeah, that's a good time to think. I find that um, music is really a great way for um, me to find 
a little bit of peace to think about things. Um, I always use my my backups, Bartok or Beethoven. Always, there's always something that calls to your soul um, that you can sort of soothe and listen to and um, help you put forward a happier, healthier you. Pamela says she loves being Jew Jewish because she knows that Hashem can handle her anger, her sadness, and everything else she's capable of feeling. Yes, that's that's the really important part, that it's kind of uh, made a choice to have that partner in the world, that I can tell Hashem anything and not be afraid. And I can learn from every new thing that I think about, every new thing that I put forth in the world. It changes it, and, and every evolution... Um, forwards or backwards, is still movement, and movement is always good for getting the stagnation out of the soul, out of the dust of life. Uh, there's a great quote um, on our band shirts in high school, music washes away the dust from the soul of everyday life. And so, uh, that, that was an important reason why I went ahead and tried to learn something, per se. Hopefully it <laughs> wasn't too bad. So. Does anybody else have any other thoughts about the Days of Awe or um, anything interesting in the news? Pamela says there's a lot of proverbs about music. It soothes the savage beat. Yeah, that really does, um, really does do that. I've been a musician for 17 years now of various instruments, and without it, I don't know where I would be. <clears throat> Patrick's asking how how does it feel to be in the JPA? Uh, it feels really awesome to uh, be able to to be a part of this. Um, this movement, this um, transition, this um, uh, shot at trying to fill the void that is out there in the world. Um, to provide such a service and community that um, makes the world a better place. Um, it's really great. And it, it, was really it's really neat to be uh, mentioned in an article, so that was great. And it was a really good article and had some um, neat other organizations that are trying to reach out and do similar things, but not quite what what uh, we're doing. So it's really neat to see, um, and I'm really overjoyed at the amount of resources um, that have become available on the internet. It's just the amount of Torah study you can do now without having to have a book. You don't need a brick and mortar, shall we say, library anymore. You don't have to go find that book. Google and and um, all the wonderful universities um, are making um, text available to us and how-tos available to us uh, so that we can further ourselves and uh, kind of do-it-yourself education so that we can um, do the same thing as you would in a, in a traditional yeshiva. You can sit and study Torah. You can, I have a digital copy of the Talmud because of course my roommates would just, they, I don't know what they would do if I brought home an entire, you know, collection of it. Patrick says we've been getting some awesome mail lately. Mostly rabbis that are pissed off that we're doing this on our own as a community. <laughs> That's a shame. It's a shame that they can't see that a lot of us are in um, alternative situations and we're in an interesting age groups. And um, us coming together is 
um, helping all of us, and I think that um, they're, they might be upset because it's something that they haven't been able to do. It's something they didn't tap into, and it kind of takes the young to make the revolution of the, of the future. Um, <laughs> Patrick says that, right, it's working. Good. Uh, it's good to be part of something that works, and, and it's expanding. Patrick, and it's so great, Patrick and Michael have got things going, and, and now it's got all of us involved, and we're going to have so much variation with having Monday with one pe one set of people, Hava and Rob, and then me on Wednesdays, and then we get to go back and have our, you know, normal Patrick and Michael on Fridays, and, and it'll be really great, and hopefully we'll get some more interesting stuff. Pamela says, do you think, I'm assuming the rabbis are upset, this threatens the dwindling numbers uh, at synagogues with American Jews? Um, I think that is a big problem, but if the brick and mortar um, synagogues could offer what this could offer, then they wouldn't have a dwindling group. If they moved into the 21st century and um, broadcast it and made available their Sunday school lessons online, then they would um, see some of the results um, that you know we're getting. Uh, they would see um, that they could reach even larger numbers of people, and uh, I think that would be great. There was uh, in that article there was uh, mention of uh, I believe it was in Ohio, um, but don't quote me on it that. Uh, uh, a temple hired someone to be uh, the liaison on their internet work, and that was uh, that was really cool to see that somebody's doing that. But they found that um, there's sort of a schism between what happens at the shul and what doesn't. It would be really great if there was a way to partner. Um, this idea with um, a larger, like, closer community. Patrick says, uh, we're able to do this because we want, oh, I lost it, because we want it and we are, going, we are not going to compromise, plus there's a community. They just create websites and assume people will show up. Think again. And I, I think Patrick's pretty right about that. If, if you if you don't put um, the effort in to reach out to bring live uh, information to expand what's available on the internet, then um, you won't get the results that you want. You won't get the results that we're starting to see here. And uh, I think that's a shame. Everybody's got to move into the, the to you know the current world, and so it's uh, really important that even us um, pay attention and continue to evolve how we do things in order to meet the demands of our community and hopefully expand even further. So. Anybody have any other thoughts? Uh, yeah, um, the thought is that he didn't think this was intended to replace physical synagogues. Um, and Patrick's response is that the thing is we we are a physical synagogue. He's right. We're not uh, a wall and we're not the doorway and we're not a, a building, but we're a community. And we have our facility. We have our Ustream. We have in, in the yeshiva, we have one shul. We have 
all of these great resources, they're just in a different form. They're not... They're not tied to being set in stone, if you will. They're there to evolve and to serve and to build community rather than build a status symbol or build a, build a stone that's always going to sit there. Um, what, what we're able to do is be there for people who can't get out and be there, like it's been said before, people in the armed forces, people that have to move, people that um, just can't don't have uh, um, a synagogue in their area. This is, you know, when they don't have the resources they need or they don't have the funding to keep up that physical building. They, this is, you know, something that can help and, and, and build a community. So, uh, I'm really grateful that that we're able to come together every week, and I, I look forward to the um, the moment of the day is uh, uh, for praying. As um, I think Patrick said one day, sort of the Torah coffee break of the day to stop and reflect and think and rejuvenate to make it through the rest of the day. That 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 spiritual cup of coffee, if you will. Patrick is saying he wanted to, uh, we have the indiegogo.com slash one shul to donate, uh, or you can donate through punktora at gmail.com, and uh, it's really important, I'm, a, I'm about to do that myself. Even those who live upon charity are required to give a piece of charity themselves. Uh, I commit to be able to share, even if it's the smallest crumb with your neighbor with your group, with those programs and those people that are in need. So I always try to find whatever little money I can to, to do that. It's not much, but <laughs> it's something. Pamela's saying, as long as giving does not put you in debt to another. Uh, that's true, but, you know, the, even the smallest amount can make a big difference. And um, if you if you can't give money, you can give time. Time is time is money, as they say. Um, there's always something to be done in every community. And those who can't bankroll it can be there to um, add Torah learning or add their special skill or use something of their artistic ability to generate money or generate information or pass along um, ideals in order to support and further the community. So there's always something you can do, even if it isn't money. Although, money goes a long way. <laughs> Let's be honest. Pamela says she, if she tells others that they buy more than five cups of coffee at 450 a cup, then you should be giving to charity. That's exactly right. I, um, I myself trade with a neighbor. They don't have internet, but they work at a um, coffee. They're a barista, and so they get free coffee. So they bring me coffee, and I get... Um, high quality coffee in my French press in exchange for, you know, letting them use my internet. So it works out really well. Everybody can do something. Everybody can trade and share and in doing this it it makes us all stronger and better and more able to do the things we need to do to get through the day, to get through the week, to make the world a better place, to give our spark um, to the world.
we have anything else we want to talk about, or do we think we want to wrap up? Pamela said it's great how I connect with my neighbor. She doesn't know hers. She wants to talk about, uh, she also wants to talk, can we talk about kosher with a non-kosher Jew? Well, which kind of kosher are we talking about? Kashru? I guess, uh, I know, I know, I, I don't know any of my Jewish friends that keep kosher in regards to food. Not, I can't think of a single one. They all kind of uh, find it funny that I'm so strict about my rules. But, you know, I've lived with vegans, and one of my best friends um, is a vegan. And so I can understand making a choice and following through on that choice to um, when it comes to food. And... Um, everybody has a reason why they do something, and um, if you don't have a reason behind it, if you don't feel connected to what you, um, to the ideals of Kashru, then there's not really much point in you doing it. Um, Pamela says she has problems, she doesn't eat pork or shellfish, but separates her milk and meat, but her husband put pork on every shelf in the fridge. Yeah, that, that's a problem. Uh, I used to get in trouble with the vegans for putting cheese on the wrong shelves because it was too close to the tofu or was on top of the soy sausage, as we call it. <laughs> soy sausage. So. And they really hate it when you make beef stew in front of them. <laughs> Of course, uh, my roommate Sarah, she's very wise, she was saying the other day how it's, it, it should be, if it, if it isn't considered, it should be considered a sin to eat in front of a fasting man. It's the same idea, you shouldn't be cooking uh, uh, beef stew in front of my vegan friends, but, you know, I like beef stew. <laughs> so, I mean... Do we have anything else, Patrick? Was there anything else you wanted to add? Well, I think, uh... I think I'll wrap up. I don't have anything else to say. Uh, just um, join us on Facebook. Join us live for uh, prayer service and and give what you can to the cause in, in time and money and effort and even in emotion. And uh, thank you for having me again this, this week. Take care.